From three-wheelers that are falling apart to ugly SUVs, here are 10 of the worst cars of all time. Number 10, 2003 Saturn Ion. Saturn was a subsidiary company of General Motors, and throughout the 90s, the brand was doing pretty well. In 2003, though, it was time to revamp their offering, and unfortunately for them and their customers, they came up with the Saturn Ion. The troubles began at the start when reviewers tried out the new car. It was described as being awful in every way. The external look was uninspiring. The quality of construction was poor, it was noisy, it was unresponsive and horrible to drive, and the interior design was basic and dated. It was terrible timing for this because their competitors like Toyota and Honda had come out with excellent models in the same small car class, and the Ion had no chance of competing. The final nail was put in the coffin of the Ion when numerous safety issues were discovered. The model was eventually recalled because of a faulty ignition switch. Saturn never managed to rescue their reputation after the Ion and other failures, and the Saturn brand was discontinued in 2009. Number 9. The Chevrolet Citation The Citation is often thought of as the biggest mistake ever by GM, and it started out so well. The X car was released in 1980 and was so popular at the time that Chevrolet couldn't keep up with demand. Some people had to wait for months before theirs was delivered, and if there hadn't been so many production issues, more than a million could have been sold in the first year. Demand just dive-bombed over the next few years, and by 1985, they had to cease production. This happened because of the terrible build quality of the Citation. Plus, it had the added bonus of an old design and noisy engine. Endless accounts of transmission hoses leaking and causing fires, drivability issues, and difficulties with shifting the transmissions meant that it soon developed a poor reputation. The interior was horrendous too, and it felt cheap. Cost-cutting measures had been taken throughout the design, and by the time the first cars had been delivered, word got out and people looked elsewhere for their next ride. Proof that it could have been so much better came with the Chevy Celebrity, which was essentially the same car but with a better designed interior and more reliable components. Had they done this from the start, then the Citation would have been an entirely different beast altogether. And now for number 8, but if you are new to this channel, welcome! And be sure to subscribe before you go! Number 8. The Austin Allegro the Austin Allegro was produced by British car manufacturer Leyland in the 1970s, and it went down as one of the worst cars the notoriously shambolic company would produce. It was designed in 1973 and was rushed into production, presumably before anyone thought about whether they were making something people would want to drive. It looks dumpy, and the steering wheel was an awful design. There wasn't much space inside, unlike competitors' offerings at the time, and it became famed for its poor reliability, being almost guaranteed to break down at the most inopportune moment. The lack of quality in construction also led to comical consequences, with owners discovering that if they jacked the car up from the wrong position, the back window would fall out and the doors would get stuck shut. It's hardly a surprise, then, that those who owned an Austin Allegro think back with dread at their experience, and it's often voted as the worst car ever made in Britain. Number 7. The Vauxhall Frontera The Vauxhall Frontera was first sold in 1989 as one of the first crossover SUVs. It was designed in a partnership between GM and Isuzu, and in America it was known as the Isuzu MU, which stood for Mysterious Utility. They wanted to get into the growing market so fast for this vehicle that they cut corners and rushed production, which led to a terrible experience. They launched before they were ready. The handling was atrocious and the ride was so bouncy that even short journeys would leave you feeling rattled. There wasn't much space in the cabin of the car and the side hinged tailgate limited any storage capacity in the trunk. They also had a habit of breaking down and guzzled far more fuel than similar models from other manufacturers. It soon gained a terrible reputation as being uncomfortable, impractical, and unreliable. Things that nobody wants. Surprisingly, it was replaced by a second-generation model. This version, too, was a flawed concept, and they were forced to go back to the drawing board with a completely revamped design for the future. Number 6. 1975 Trabant Usually known for their precision engineering, someone clearly didn't get the memo when they were designing this car when the country was still split into East and West Germany. It was made on the communist side and became known as the People's Car, going head-to-head -head with the Volkswagen Beetle. It seriously failed at this endeavor, though, and became synonymous with poor communist-style design. 
It only had an 18 horsepower engine, so it wasn't exactly designed to reach high speed, but that proved to be fortunate because on occasions when turbines went fast, they were known to start falling apart. The body panels would just drop onto the road. They also neglected to include any of the safety features you would expect from a car. There were no braking lights, no turn signals, and the brakes wouldn't reliably work when you needed them to. It looks awful too and will probably go down as the worst German car that has ever been made. Number 5. Reliant Robin When you think of a car, there are certain things you don't expect to see, three wheels being one of them. Well, this next car, the worst ever built in Britain, maybe tied with the Austin Allegro, is the Reliant Robin, and someone actually thought it would be a good idea to only give it three wheels. The one wheel at the front is mounted in the center, and most worrying of all, is the one that steers. With a body made out of plastic and the stability you'd expect, these cars are very easy to tip over. The build quality was poor too, and if a driver was brave enough to get their Reliant Robin to any semblance of high speed, the roof would lift up and rain could pour down the inside of the windshield. This car was so bad and comical looking that it featured in a number of British comedy shows from the time. It did have one redeeming feature though. The three-wheel design meant that you didn't need a full driver's license to drive. Instead, you only needed a motorbike license, so it gave people the ability to drive who otherwise wouldn't have been able to. See, you could have been 16 and driving this. Number 4. Davis Divin Next on the list is another three-wheel car, this time made by the Davis Motor Car Company of California between 1947 and 1949. They were built in a hangar at Van Nuys Airport and were 183.5 inches long and 60 inches high. The unusual design was supposedly inspired by fighter aircraft, but in reality, it looks more like an upturned bathtub. Fitted with a 63 horsepower engine, Davis claimed that the cars could reach a top speed of 100 miles per hour and were even able to do a U-turn at 55 miles per hour. That would be convenient. They were scheduled to go on sale for $1,600 each, but things began to go wrong long before it went on sale. Despite raising more than a million dollars by the sale of 350 dealerships, only 13 dive-ins were ever built. Mired in controversy because of the failure to pay staff and suppliers, the company buckled under the weight of numerous court actions and went out of business. They were forced to give the cars to creditors. The dive-in, so poor in design, was oversold to potential dealers and resulted in the company founder being accused of fraud and then the company's demise. It's definitely for the best though because these cars are death traps and would never have been safe if they were driven at the suggested speeds. Yeah, don't do a U-turn at 55 miles per hour. Number 3. Yugo GV The Yugo GV, as it was known in the US, was a Yugoslavian-built three-door hatchback that sold almost 150,000 units across America between 1985 and 1992. At first, you'll notice the horrible exterior design, but as with many cars built in the former Soviet bloc, the Yugo GV became known for the issues with its build, quality, and reliability. It was based upon old generation technology from Fiat, and as such, required regular maintenance and replacement of crucial engine parts every 40,000 miles. They had very specific user instructions, something that wasn't understood by most owners, and led to frequent breakdowns on the side of the road where the engine was completely destroyed. Because honestly, how many people read the manual? Despite its derision in the US and Western Europe, even spawning a joke that with it, you go nowhere, get it? The Yugo GV remained in production in Serbia until 2008, where it is still often seen on the roads. Number two, 1989 Eagle Premier. When you first see the Eagle Premier, it looks like any other basic car of the 80s. It has a chunky design and a boring color, so what makes it so bad? Well, it's not so much what it does, but what it doesn't do. There's simply nothing that stands out about this car whatsoever. The designers simply don't seem to have put any effort in it at all, and it's just average on every point. You wouldn't feel proud driving this through town, it doesn't go particularly fast, and despite being marketed as a luxurious car, it shows no signs of luxury at all. It's uninspiring, dull, and underwhelming, and has terrible fuel economy too. Probably not worth the price. Number 1. 2001 Pontiac Aztec You might recognize this car, it was the one used by Walter White in Breaking Bad, but even being a part of television history can't make the Aztec any less worse. Not only is it an awful car, but it's without a doubt the worst that has been released this century, and they should have known better. It looks like they designed the front half for one purpose and then smoked something courtesy of Heisenberg before designing the rear half. 
It regularly tops polls of the ugliest cars of all time. And while the designers openly admitted they were trying to make it a bold, in-your-face vehicle, they clearly went quite a few steps too far. When it was launched, it cost a lot for its intended audience, especially considering competitor cars at the time, and GM was soon forced to cut the price substantially. It was a complete sales disaster for them, with customers not able to get over the aesthetic design, let alone the lack of features inside. Thanks for watching! I hope you don't have any of these cars, but if you do, hopefully you just had a positive experience. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!